Hey everybody! Earlier this week I threatened to make another video and this is me making good on that promise. Um, but before we get started I wanted to uh, throw a quick shout out to a podcast that I've uh, fallen in love with. It's called The Cold War Vault. I'll go ahead and leave a link to it in the description. The Cold War Vault, it's, uh, it's a podcast that just really finds unique and interesting stories about the, the Cold War and, and, and brings them to you. In, a, in an amazingly high quality format. Uh, DJ Kinney, he's the, uh, that's Dr. DJ Kinney, mind you, um, he's the historian that, that puts that on. And, uh, and he just, he, it's kind of the opposite of these videos. He, uh, he has all his facts uh, together, he has a really good delivery, high quality production values. Um, you know, it just, it, it blows me away what he's able to do. So, you know, give that a, give that a look. Uh, rather a listen, I suppose, and, and I'm sure he would appreciate it. So today's video, we're going to be talking about the Battle of Cheetah. Now, when you look at it as an English speaker, it's C-H-I-T-A, and so it, for us it would be Chita, um, because it doesn't have an E on the end, so you know, the I is, an I, is a uh, I instead of an E. But uh, in Russian, trust me, it's Cheetah. And uh, so it's, it's pronounced like, uh, like the big cat or uh, the New England Patriots. So cheetah. Um, and with that all out of the way, let's go ahead and just go to the map. Okay, everybody, let's uh, see what we have here. This is uh, my battle map for cheetah. Um, if you want to take a look at this, you should be able to you know, zoom in, zoom out, manipulate it. Um, you can't change anything, but you can, you can definitely look at everything. And that's at my website, alexanderaronson.com. I'll let you sort out how to spell that. Um, but anyway, so we're looking at uh, the last time we talked, we've talked about the Far East. Uh, so over here in Vladivostok, that's where a lot of uh, stuff's going on. That's uh, uh, Major Kapryanov over there. And then we've also talked a little bit about Kyakht. This is where the, uh, the Chinese made their, their main push in the Transbaikal area. Um, and so now this is in between the two. And this was originally something that the Chinese were leaving alone. Um, but they decided to kind of take advantage of applying pressure across the entire front. Uh, you know, obviously not the entire front, but in concentrated areas. Uh, the Russians, their strategy was to essentially trade um, this distance for time. So they, they weren't really in a good position to defend across the whole border. So instead they withdrew to Cheetah so that they could try to just set up one battle royale. They would then invite, essentially inv invite the Chinese to, uh, to attack them there. Uh, and with, with hope and good strategy, they could, they could uh, you know, win the day. So what did this really look like? Let's zoom in a little bit so we can kind of see the lay of the land. Now what I've done is I've used contact markers uh, to show uh, the starting points of the units. And, and it's, it's pretty easy to understand what's going on. If you look at the terrain, there are essentially two passes into, or rather two avenues of approach to Cheetah. The first one is this, uh, the Ngota Valley, which is this open area between these two sets of mountains. I mean, this is the, this is the highway. This is the, the easy way in. It's the front door. Uh, but then a much more uh, dangerous route is through this pass through these mountains, which is to the southeast. So the Chinese, they decided to take their 81st Group Army, which consisted of uh, in addition to, the, obviously, the uh, ancillary support units, um, we have the 7th Heavy Combined Arms Brigade. I'm not going to go through each of these. Uh, the, the, you guys are definitely uh, tune out. But anyway, they have three heavy arms... Heavily... They have three heavy combined arms brigades, two medium combined arms brigades, and one light combined arms brigade. And essentially what the differentiating, differentiating, differentiating factors between the heavy, medium, and light are what vehicles they're using. So the heavy brigades, those are, have a more of an emphasis on armor. The medium brigade, uh, the medium brigades 
have more of an emphasis on IFVs and the light brigades are IFVs and and as far as the mobile guns go they have self-propelled mortars as opposed to the to the larger guns so uh, that's that's kind of the definitions there now if you look at this you know it looks like it's a fairly even fight now that's that's kind of my fault because I don't have my my markers quite up to 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 par for that. So even though it looks like uh, there's a lot more, there, there are more blue units in defense than there are red units on the attack. Um, each of these, th this is a, an entire brigade, whereas uh, you know, this right here, this this marker here is actually just to indicate where the spotters are for the artillery. And the reason I included them is because they're mentioned in the book. Um, in addition to that, the brigades, the uh, Soviet, or rather the Russian brigades, are broken up. Um, so the the 36th separate motorized brigade, you know, these are their BTRs. Those are wheeled transports that they use. But then this one right here, these are their BMPs, which are their infantry fighting vehicles. So they're broken up into smaller, uh, smaller units. So, so while the board doesn't look like it, the the Chinese are really bringing overwhelming force. So the idea was to send these heavy brigades up the Ngota Valley and, and attack Cheetah head on while the smaller, lighter forces would try to work through the back door. And the idea is to essentially just, you know, meet, meet them in the middle. Uh, and, and so by the, by the time it's all said and done, they'll just have wiped out everybody and, um, you know, they'll, they will have essentially uh, cut off the Soviet Far East from, I'm sorry, the, you can tell I'm writing the uh, Soviet Endgame books right now. <laughs> but the Russian Far East from uh, the rest of the country. So, how did it go? The first thing that we had was in south of uh, man, and, and T. Fitch is going to make fun of me because I'm going to butcher some Russian here, but uh, Adamanovka, um, that's this, this basically kind of a suburb of Cheetah in the mountains. Well, there was a uh, there was a minefield that essentially alerted the uh, forces, the uh, NATO forces, to their presence. Now, in this whole valley, uh, they they had dismounted the, the uh, they had dismounted infantry and uh, IFVs. So, in this case, we had the twenty uh, third Mountain Infantry. Now, that that actually is a German unit, one of two German units that took part in the battle. Uh, and then this is their their dismounted. Or I'm sorry. This is their uh, their IFVs, their boxer infantry fighting vehicles. Um, and you know, I actually these guys are should be down here um, because this is sort of a kill box. So what they did was they allowed the um, Chinese to advance towards Adamanovka, and once they got into that box. They started lighting them up. Um, Anti-tank guided missiles uh, fired both from um, man portable launchers as well as from the infantry fighting vehicles. Um, these are the BMPs, I believe, of the 36th. They had two. They split their all of their BMPs into two separate units. Uh, one we saw earlier on the on the west side, and then this one on the east side. Um, anyway, so they have all of these units lined up in this valley so that they can you know essentially set a gigantic ambush now it, it was kind of nightmarish as you can imagine for the chinese because they're just popping off and they don't really have good targets because of cover and concealment so this their their attack here really bogs down um and and they don't have an easy way to retreat that's kind of the biggest problem that they have is wrecked vehicles start to, you know, be a problem to maneuver around when you're trying to back out. Well, while this is happening over here, you have the advance going on uh, on the west side. And these are the heavy units, so they're led by armor, and then they have uh, the IFVs with the artillery bringing up the rear. 
and the first thing they do is they get picked on by the uh, by some artillery so the Russian 200th artillery brigade is is stationed out in the out in the hills and the valleys here they're just kind of hiding in the crags and as soon as the spotters pick up the incoming uh, tanks they they start lighting them up now the the downside to this is of course using uh, counter battery fire the self-propelled guns can just set up shop and as soon as the uh, you know, f uh, fire direction radar comes on they can determine the uh, you know the location of the Soviet gu Russian guns like, boy I tell you I'm just gonna keep using Soviet aren't I uh, once that happens so the idea is that as the Chinese are running this gauntlet the Russians are going to attack the flanks as they come through and, and the, they're hoping that they can whittle down the attacking forces enough that by the time they reach Cheetah itself, that they'll be able to use an armored uh, attack to, to break up the rest of the, the Chinese. So the first attempt they have at that is they bring in their the 36th motorized uh, rifle battalions, uh, BMPs. These guys are not tanks. And they're really, the idea is to come down, pick a, pick a tank, fire your cornet missile, and then get the hell out of there. And, and they did half of that. They did manage to take out uh, a couple of the Chinese tanks, but they were absolutely devastated. They, they lost, uh, you know, all of those BMPs that were in that attack were destroyed, and many, most of the crew uh, were killed. Uh, and so, so that that was not boding well. That that attack did not go as well as they had hoped. But they didn't have any time to come up with another plan. So essentially, they did ultimately do the same thing with the BTRs. Uh, the BTRs were, we had a couple of them managed to get away, um, but it was still you know a pretty futile attack. Um, not not really. Giving you know, as the defender, you you know they're going to the the attacker is going to bring more, so you have to be able to take out. You can't do a one for one exchange. Um, you know that's that's never going to work. Um, but the uh, the drive continues on until essentially the twelfth uh, Panzer Brigade of the uh, German Army comes down, and as the the there was a T-90 tank company attached to the 36th, and they attack head-on the, the elements of the 7th uh, Heavy Combined Arms Regiment. And while they're attacking head-on, the 12th Panzer Brigade is able to attack the 194th Combined Arms Brigade, basically flanking it as it's as it's heading north. Now, the results of these attacks, you know, you figure between the artillery, the BMPs, the BTRs, uh, the lead elements were were already taking some hits, but. This, this massed armor attack really does a great job of repelling those first two uh, those first two brigades. Now what the problem is and they, you know they don't, they don't know it when they're busy winning so so they've basically by the time the the 12th Panzer Brigade is done, um, most of this 194th Arms Brigade, you know, the heavy units especially have been destroyed. The, almost the entirety of the 7th Combined Arms Brigade is destroyed. Anything that's left is retreating. And the Germans and the Russians basically fall back what's left of their forces, which is not much. I, I forgot to write down what the uh, numbers were. But they retreat into Cheetah to, to continue the fight. And while that's happening, you know, they, these whatever's left of the first two uh, combined arms regiments are regrouping while the 195th Heavy Combined Arms Brigade is going to continue the battle. And this is really what happens. You had the, you had the stragglers from the tanks and you had the, uh, basically the cooks in the, uh, the cooks and the clerks from the 29th Army, uh, which I mean, not much of an army by this point, but they're defending here. So while the back door was essentially closed, and a lot of the German and uh, still, well, the, uh, the German forces here are able to withdraw into the mountains and escape 
so that they can they can fight again another day. Uh, the Russians are essentially fighting to the last man, you know, as, as best they can uh, until they're captured or killed, and. We we end the battle with with Cheetah in uh, Chinese hands. It was it, it cost them a lot, but given their their desire to separate the Far East from the uh, rest of Russia, it was definitely a uh, a tactical success. So uh, I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope this gave some clarity so you can see you know the the terrain. I think you can you can understand why the Chinese chose the the attack that they did, and you can see why the uh, Russians thought that they might have a chance to defend, but that with overwhelming force, uh, the Chinese were just able to, to overrun them. So anyway, uh, I hope you enjoy this. I hope you give this video a like, um, you know, subscribe if you're looking forward to more content. I've got some more videos that we're going to do on other battles. I think we might do the Battle of the Java Sea next. I haven't done a naval battle yet. So that might be uh, a little different. Or we might just uh, start moving on into um, Monroe Doctrine Volume 5.